It is time to do my best makeup of 2022. It's going to be a long one. Grab a drink, grab a snack, settle in, get cozy, and let's talk about my makeup favorites for this year. So before we get started, let's go ahead and do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get started. First things first, this makeup look is coming. Don't worry, it is coming Friday my time, Thursday for other parts of the world, depending on what time zone you're in. So it is coming, stay tuned. Um, okay, I'm not going to be able to link all of these products down below because there is so many of them. So I'm going to link my, like my, sh my shop, shop my shelf account and on there you can shop videos or posts if you click on the post tab i'll have it linked you can shop all of the products through there if you wish to or see like the products talked about all that kind of stuff it should be set up so that whatever country you're in it recognizes it and it will take you to a link for your country not all of the countries just like the uk us australia canada or whatever so depending on what's available you probably don't care about that but just in case you're interested that's that. Normally I do these uh, like favorites each year with like one at a max two products but this year I tried the most makeup that I've ever ever tried and I like different things for different reasons especially complexion products so I wanted to share like my real favorites for the year that are true favorites and the reasons why just in case you vibe with different like if you have different skin types I have combo skin that this year really in the winter changed to proper dry so there's foundations for example that I like, really liked in winter time and then there's ones now that I really like in summertime when my skin's oily. So I wanted to share that just in case it's helpful to you depending on your skin type. Also, all of the makeup is makeup that I tried in the year of 2022. It might not have been released. Majority of them have been released this year, but it might not specifically have been released in this year. But it's I personally tried it this year. And lastly, we all have different preferences, likes, dislikes, all that kind of stuff. So just keep in mind, this is all completely opinion based and my personal preference and what works for me personally. So let's get into it. First things first is primer. We're going to go in order of makeup application for me. I don't physically have this primer in my collection anymore. I tried it first in January this year and I used it up within six months, I'm pretty sure, or not, maybe seven. I love it. The reason why I haven't repurchased it already, even though it's a favorite, is because I'm trying to be a good girl and use up some of my other primers before I rebuy it because I know I'm just going to use this over and over and they'll get left. And it is the Chanel Le Beige's Water Fresh Tint. So not the Complexion Touch one, but the Water fresh tint. I don't know what it is about that primer that I adore so much, but it is glorious. I just find it for my combo skin so hydrating and I have really sensitive red skin that gets really irritated. I find it really cooling and refreshing on my sensitive skin. If I have hot skin because it's irritated, it like really calms it all down. And the tint in it just adds a lovely kind of wash of tint over my skin to calm that redness down, almost like color corrected a bit. Not color correct, but you know, cover it a little bit before I put my foundation on. It just adds that little extra coverage, especially if I'm using like a lighter coverage foundation for the day. I love it. Hands down, we'll repurchase it. The other one is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Pore Primer. This is gold to me. This is actually the second tub that I have started this year. So I've already used up one tub. This is glorious. It is the only pore filling primer I have ever used that actually fills my pores and smooths that area. It doesn't get rid of them completely. We're still human, but this is by far the best one I have ever tried. I will continue to repurchase it. It's actually flawless in my mind. Also, if you want more in-depth reviews on these products, these are all featured on my channel quite regularly. You can just search like Martina Lily and then say like, I don't know, Chanel water fresh tint and any videos that I have with that product will come up. So if you want to deep dive on any of them, that's my biggest recommendation. So foundation, my number one foundation for the year. This is my number one foundation for the year is the NARS light reflecting foundation. I have two shades. Mont Blanc is my winter shade and Deville is my summer shade. Who knew I actually did actually get a tan? This is my tan, by the way. I'm still pretty white, aren't I? <laughs> um, I love this foundation. It is so natural and skin-like. That's what I love about it. It's the most perfect everyday foundation. I actually wore this on my wedding day this year. Um, and I don't know. It's flawless. doesn't break me out. 
it wears really, really well. It is a light to medium coverage foundation. If you're looking for that real solid full coverage, it's probably not going to be for you. But for me, for the everyday, or just really any occasion, honestly, I, I love this. A newer foundation that I've fallen absolutely head over heels in love with, and this is specifically when I do have that drier skin. I can wear this with my combo oily skin. I just need to set my face a little bit more. But I think if you have dry skin, um, especially you'll really like this. And this is the House Labs Triclone Foundation. I have the shade 100 and and 110 light neutral. I really like this. I really like this. It is dewy. If you don't like a dewy foundation, you probably won't like it, but it actually does have skincare ingredients in it. I saw a dermatologist talk about it and they were like, this foundation actually like does have skincare ingredients in it that will help your skin, which is awesome. I love the coverage that it applies. It's pretty solid, almost full coverage. And I love the way that it looks on my skin. It's very natural looking. So it doesn't, if you, when I apply it, it doesn't really look like I'm wearing a lot of foundation at all. It looks, it's just very natural. It wears really well. It's just, yeah, it really took me by surprise. The shade is a bit hard. The shade is a bit hard. If you have the luxury of going into a store and getting shade matched, I'd recommend it. But for the rest of us in the world that's not in the US, you kind of just going to have to take your pick. But I just picked 110 light neutral, which is anytime there's a light neutral shade is the one that I pick up and it, it matches pretty well. Now my last two are like proper full coverage foundations for when you just need that coverage. This one is the KVD Good Apple Foundation, which I know you can see how much I've used of this. This one's nearly done. This is in the shade Light 12. I know this came out a while ago, but I only was able to pick it up when I went to the US this year. Oh wow, I love this foundation. It's the foundation I'm wearing today in this video. It's so smoothing. It's you can really sheer this product out to be quite sheer. You can build it up to be full coverage. Um, you can tailor the coverage. Don't just go off the TikToks where they're just like piling it on. Um, the, the more you put on for this, it is a cream foundation and it does have an almost dewy like finish. So if you, the more you kind of pack on your face, it is going to kind of look a bit oily and greasy. It just is because it's that kind of a cream formula, right? But if you are mindful about how you apply it, don't do the TikTok thing and just painted on like start with a light coverage and even spot conceal which is what I've done today or slowly build it up in areas that you need but I just find this flawless absolutely flawless it makes my skin just look perfect in my mind this last foundation also not a new foundation in any way shape or form but I tried it this year and I love love this foundation especially now that it's summertime here in Australia my oily skin is out and I just love it, this foundation for summer and it is the pure four-in-one love your selfie foundation i have the shade ln6 it is glorious i have a look coming up on thursday my time wednesday for some of you where i'm wearing this foundation and my skin literally looks like a filter it is so smoothing it really pretty much makes me poreless it's super long wearing it is a matte finish so if you don't want a matte finish don't even bother because it is matte but for me right now in a hot climate it's perfect with my combo skin so if you have combo oily skin you'll love this you can again like sheer this out to be light coverage or medium, but you can build this up to be a proper full coverage and it is glorious, but it doesn't look cakey on the skin whatsoever. Whereas if you're not careful, I will admit this can look a little bit cakey um, because it is that cream formula. No matter how much I put on in this, it doesn't ever look cakey. It is such a good foundation formula. Let's talk about color correctors, which is a product that I really started testing out this year and I have tried quite a few this year. I actually have to admit this one product, I don't remember if I picked it up last year or this year, but if I did pick it up last year, I know I didn't really use it at all because I really didn't see, I just didn't understand. It's a long story. Anyway, this I really do love though. This is the Charlotte Tilbury color corrector. I think it's the Magic Vanish. This is in the shade one. And I, I love this. You can see I've hit pan on it. I use it all the time. It is such a good, good product. My only critique of this is that it's in this little pot. I'd like to see it in like either with a doe foot applicator or like a stick format because it does get dirty, like either putting your brush in here or your finger in here. It's kind of gross. But the product itself is really lovely. I like that this formula goes on. It's hydrating on the under eye without being like too hydrating that it's going to break up any of your products. Um, but it's also smoothing and it doesn't interfere with the formulas of the concealers that you put over the top of it. So I love this one. I also have really enjoyed the Bobbi Brown Color Corrector Stick. This is in the shade Light Bisque. I'm going to be honest, the one of the biggest reasons why I love this is because it is in the stick. 
I just like the ease of use of this. I can just draw it on and tap it out with my finger or a brush or a sponge and it's really, really seamless and easy. But I do actually quite like this product. It's a little bit drier of a product than the Charlotte Tilbury one. So if that's something that you're looking for, you might really like this one. Um, but it's still really good. Uh, do I prefer the Charlotte Tilbury one over it? Yes, but I really enjoy the ease of use of this. But also, I still actually like this product. It really does do a good job of color correcting and it's a lovely shade for my under eyes. Let's talk about concealers, a product that I feel very passionately about. For context, if you're new around here, I went on this massive concealer journey this year to find the perfect concealer because I have terrible under eyes. I have darkness that is not just like one color darkness it's like multi-color darkness so color correctors are quite hard for me i have hyperpigmentation that makes it look like i've been punched in the face at all times they're textured i've got wrinkles and they're dry like the i've got it all trust me so concealer is a really tough one <laughs> for me but this year i did find a holy grail concealer and if you watched my 2021 favorites I, or no sorry my makeup resolutions video that I put up last week around how I went for this year on those then you know exactly what I'm going to say but the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer is hands down the best concealer I have ever tried in my life period that's it this is the number one concealer I have the shade 2.1 and 2.7 um, mixed together they make the perfect shade for me. I can use them separately but just together they make the perfect shade. I love these. I will instantly repurchase this the second it's out. It is the only concealer I have ever used that I can put one layer on and it covers my under eyes perfectly. I mean not to the point where it's like all of the imperfections are completely erased away because that's just not humanly possible, right? It's just not. But it is the closest that a concealer has ever come to making my under eyes completely perfect. It's flawless. It's lightweight. It's hydrating without being greasy on the under eyes. It doesn't break up. It wears really well. It's super full coverage. Love it. Another concealer that I originally, when I tried it, really, really enjoyed it. Kind of went through a little phase of not being quite so sure and then really fell in love with it again. And that is the, and these are so messy, but here we are. I don't have time to clean them. <laughs> um, this is the KVD Good Apple Concealer. I have 122 and triple one. I really like this concealer. It is a little bit more hydrating than the Huda Beauty one and not quite as full coverage, but I don't know why. This just works super lovely on my under eyes. If I'm with this concealer, less is more. I definitely don't apply as much product of this on my under eye, and when I do that, they look really, really good. And every time I've been using them in the last few months, I just find myself wanting to keep using them over and over again. So that, that's got to tell you something, right? I really actually... I really enjoy this formula. Lastly, a concealer that I really, really love for spot concealing is the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. Again, I know that this isn't a new product to the market, but it's definitely one that I tried for the first time this year. I have the shade Vanilla and Creme Brulee because depending on what shade my skin is is going to depend on what I need to use. And these are just great. I mean, you can use these on the under eyes as well, and I don't mind them on the under eyes, but where they really shine for me is that spot correcting on the face. They're just a really solid formula for that. Doesn't like break up your foundation or anything like that. It's really seamless on the skin. Let's talk about face powder. Last year I talked and raved and ranted about the Kosas Cloud Set powder, and that is still my holy grail number one powder, hands down. It just is. It really is. But for the powders that I tried this year, I have found some new faves as well that I like to incorporate into my routine. Now, I, this year, I think it was this year that I started doing this where I started using an under eye powder and then a face powder because I noticed that I just needed to do that kind of color wise for my under eyes. And I discovered the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder for Under Eyes. This is the shade one. It's just like a mini pot of loose powder. You guys have seen me use this over and over and over and over and over and over again this year in my videos. This is my one of my finds for the year. This is definitely the best powder period I found this year. This is so good. If you like the Pat McGrath Labs under eye blurring powder, you'll really like this as well, especially if you find that Pat McGrath one just a little bit too drying. This one is just a touch more hydrating than that one. Um, I like the loose powder aspect of this because I can really control the amount of powder that I'm putting on the face. This through the T-zone as well makes you really poreless. I just don't think there's anything like this. It's, it's 
perfection. What I noticed during winter time when my skin has really transitioned to that dry skin during winter was all of the other powders that I normally use weren't super loving my skin as much. I also really didn't need the powder. Normally I use a powder puff and really pack it on, but during the winter when my skin got super my skin got super dry, I really needed just a kiss of powder. And a powder that I discovered that worked so well when my skin was feeling that way and I can still use it now in the summertime and it's lovely is the House Labs Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder. I have the shade Translucent. This is a lovely, lovely powder. Again, I have a review of House Labs on my channel if you're wondering. I took the net out because it was driving me nuts. This is great. This is great. It is really a smoothing, blurring powder with a little bit of hydration to it. So if you're not looking for that, if you really do need that proper matte set down in a powder, probably give it a skip. But if you are looking for that bit of hydration but still setting and blurring, this is a really good one. I really actually think House Labs has nailed their products this year. The last powder is one of those powders where it is mattifying. You can put it on, you can set it and forget it. Your makeup isn't going to budge. And that's the Oma Beauty Trip and Smooth Powder. I don't know why people don't talk about Oma Beauty because this brand is killing it. Honestly, the releases they've had this year have been really good. This is that like circle one. I know it went viral for a minute just because of the packaging, but I never actually really heard anyone talk about it after it went viral. I'm still here. I'm still loving it. It's such a good powder, especially for those of you with oily skin, combo skin, and really just want to set the face. Even dry skin, you can get a really fine brush and just put a dusting of this on and it will still work lovely for you. It's definitely a mattifying powder. It's so finely milled, so finely milled. You can barely feel it on the face, but it sets. It sets and it forgets, trust me. Let's move on to bronzer, blush, and highlight. I'm gonna do cream, bronzer, blush, and highlight first, and then we'll do powder. There is only, you now I tried a lot of cream products this year and a lot of cream bronzers, blah, 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 and they were all lovely. Like I don't, I don't even know if I super tried one that I hated. There is one product, there is one product that is, I think, one of the best makeup out of all of the categories products that I have ever tried in my life. I don't know why. It is just truly, truly glorious like truly glorious and it is the NARS cream bronzer in Laguna one this is magical this is such a flawless product it blends itself it just as you tap it on with a brush or a sponge it just taps on blended it is so smoothing and like undetectable on the skin it gives you the most perfect kiss of color it's long wearing I don't know what magic in a jar they have done with this but this is one of the best makeup products I've ever tried. Honestly, I am so impressed. Every time I use it, I just get blown away. I'm just so floored by how good it is. I love this bronzer. Liquid highlight. Last year, I talked about the Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow Highlighter. Still number one fave, love it. This year, I actually added Pink Moon into my collection, which is the more pink shade. So shout out to this one, definitely an absolute favorite. Such an incredible chef's kiss of a formula. There were two other liquid highlights that I tried though that, or cream highlights that I really, really did fall in love with. And the first one is the Say Super Glowy Gel. I love this stuff. I love this stuff. I do have a powder highlight on today, but it is also the cream highlight I'm wearing. It's clear, so when you apply it to the skin, it just adds this real beautiful glow from within without any tint or color to it. It's very lightweight. The gel formula works really, really well. Under powder, over powder, you can use it as a primer. You can mix it in with foundation. It's not going to change the formula of it. Such a perfect, perfect product. We have to talk about the Vive Skin Do. This stuff, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It is like a golden cream highlight. I've got a um, review of this product on my channel. I love it. It is so glorious. It has a golden tint to it. So it's kind of, it's, it's like this super glowy gel, but a little bit thicker and more, it is a little bit stickier. So I do find that I need to set this, but it's got that same kind of finish to it where it just looks really lit from within glow, but it does have a slight golden tint to it. But I think it'd be quite versatile across a lot of skin tones, if not nearly all skin tones. And it's a really great formula. I probably wouldn't mix this in with foundation, but you could use this as a primer for sure. I just think this is an awesome, awesome highlighter, like a cream highlighter. I put it on over powder. It doesn't lift my foundation or anything like that, but you can obviously put it on under powder, under foundation. It's glorious. It really... There's some products in Vive, I think, that are quite underrated. Cream blush was a hard category for me. Blush, period, was a hard category for me. I tried a lot of blush this year, and I really fell in love with a lot of blush. So I was kind of 
tough on the choices, but I still have four formulas that I fell in love with. The first one is the Chanel Le Beige's Water Fresh Blush Tint. This is in the shade Intense Coral. It is the cream blush I'm wearing today, and I have a, the Gucci one over the top. I love this formula. I saw Kaki, loves, uh, Kaki Reviews Beauty um, talk about this in her worst of. I think her and I apply it differently, and I find that the way that I apply this product on my cheeks works flawlessly or maybe it's just that this product really really works for my skin type and not hers I'm not sure but this is one of the most natural cream blushes or products I've ever used I think it's because it does have that water in it it just really melts down onto the skin and is quite seamless it doesn't leave any kind of a formula behind this beautiful tint of color I really like this to the point where as soon as these get released in Australia because yes they are not released yet I will buy more shades I love them. Next up we have the NARS Liquid Blush. This is in the shade Behave and I love this for the same reason that I love the Chanel Water Fresh Tint. It's just so flawless and natural on the skin. I think because it's such a liquidy formula, it just melts into the skin. It doesn't leave any kind of residue or anything like that behind. It's so natural, so flawless, great color. Again, another product that I'd be really interested in trying more shades of. I know these went viral and I get it. I get it. And I agree with, I, I agree with it. <laughs> Next up, we have the Victoria Beckham Cream Blushes. I recently did a full face of Victoria Beckham review, so you can go check that out if you want to see more. This is just an example. This is Playground, which is actually my favorite shade. Um, these are glorious. I love them. They're just... Again, really natural on the skin, but they're more pigmented than the first two. Like, they are a lot more vibrant. I love the unique shades that they have in this formula, and I love how long-wearing it is. I just, I don't know. I love them. I think they're awesome. Lastly is just, I wanted to give this a shout-out because I was really so impressed with this formula. I hadn't tried it before, and I just, I love everything about this product. So this is the Christmas release from Fenty Beauty. This is the double-cheeked-up cream blushes in Peony Dropper and Malé or Mali Booze, so this one right here. I love this. I love the packaging, first of all. I love this pink color, but I really love these two shades, and I really love the formula. It's a really nice formula. Um, it goes really well over powder as well. It's quite pigmented, but not in a bad way. I don't know. I was just impressed. I don't know what I was expecting from it, but I definitely didn't expect to be as wowed by this formula as I was. And it was really long wearing, just real easy to apply. And the shades just looked really lovely on the skin. So I wanted to give this a shout out because I was super impressed with the formula. I hadn't tried the, the Fenty Beauty cream formula before. Moving on to powder bronzers now. I only have one powder bronzer that I wanted to shout out this year. This just impresses me. I just, it's the bronzer that I want to use every day. It's the House Labs bronzer. I really like this. I really, really like it. It's just really smoothing on the skin. And I think it's a, um, I saw someone, I actually didn't know, but it's like a cream to powder formula. And I think that's why I like it so much. I just find it really smoothing and blurring and just flawless. I just find it flawless on the skin. I really do. And every day I go to use my makeup, it's the bronzer that I think to reach for. It's the bronzer I want to reach for. So it absolutely has got to be this this year. Even over the Gucci bronzer that I bought into my collection this year, I just, I love it. I do have some highlights to talk about. I'm pretty sure last year I talked about the Hermes highlighter. And if I didn't, I love the Hermes highlighter. I love the Hermes highlighter. That is one of my all-time favorite highlighters. But a couple of other highlighters that I've tried this year, again, House Labs. I've loved every House Labs product I brought into my collection. This is the shade Sunstone from their highlighter, and I use this quite often. Again, it's become one of those products that I just think to reach for, I want to reach for, and it's just like, as soon as I open my drawer, it's like my eyes go straight to it, and I'm like, I just want to use you. It's just lovely on the skin. It doesn't have any texture or anything to it. I love the shade of it. It's just perfect for my skin tone, for pretty much any look. It's very, you can make it a real subtle glow. You can really build it up. I don't know. I love it. I love the way this looks on my skin. It just brings me a lot of joy to use. Next up, we have a bougie one. This is the Tom Ford um, Sheer Highlighting Duo in Reflex Gilt. This is beautiful as well. This is very, very non-texturizing on the skin. It looks almost like a cream highlighter on the skin. So if you have more mature skin, this might be a really good option for you. I love that it has the pink shade and the gold shade. You can mix them together. Again, a softer highlight or you can really build it up. I just love how overall mo mostly like how natural this looks on the skin though. Love it. I want to give a shout out to the Kaleidos 
Space Age highlighters or the Kaleidos highlighters because these are awesome. These are blinding. Okay, so these are more of like, well, this one right here is Ray Rider, which reminds me of just like champagne pop. So, you know, just a little bit more of a natural kind of highlight, but which I do love. I think that's the formula is lovely, non-texturizing, all that stuff. But if you want some fun, like if you're looking for some highlighters that are going to bring some fun to your collection, then these ones, which is in Gifted and Prophecy, are your, your ones. They're so cool. They're like duochrome type highlighters. They're really, really beautiful, but you can tell, right? They're very, very blinding on the skin. So I'm trying to show you the shift, but look at that. Look, is that not magnificent? Oh, I don't even know if you can see it, but it is glorious. It's one's got like a pink shift and one's like a greeny gold shift. Absolutely perfection, honestly. Like, I just, they impress me every time. Powder blushes. Now, Pat McGrath Labs was my favorite blush formula last year, still an absolute favorite this year. This year I brought in the shade Paradise Glow and I just want to give it a shout out because this is my favorite blush shade of all time. It really is. I adore this. It is so gorgeous. It's like the most perfect, like sunburnt kissed shade and I love it. But two luxury blushes that I brought into my collection that have taken my little heart is the Gucci blush. This is in the shade Tender Apricot. I, I love it. I love everything about this blush. I'm wearing it today. It is glorious. I love the packaging. I love the size of it and I love the formula. I love it all. I really want to pick up some more shades, but I'm trying to be really well behaved because there's only so much blush one person can use, but it's delightful. Uh, and lastly, this is a newer blush that I brought into my collection and I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. It is the Hermes blush. This is in the shade uh, Rose Pomet number 32. Uh, I think this is beautiful. I love the shade of it. I think it's a really nice everyday kind of shade. I like the formula. It's a lovely buildable formula. All of these blushes actually are quite buildable, which I really enjoy. I don't have to think too hard about how I use them. Um, and I don't know. You know I love luxury makeup, you guys. So take it with a grain of salt if you don't love luxury makeup. But for me, it's about all of the experience and everything. And every time I bring an Hermes product into my collection, I really, really end up loving them. I do. Let's talk about some face palettes. I actually brought a few face palettes or like just blush palettes in general into my collection this year and some of them were hits some of them were okay like good but not rave worthy and some of them were not so much um but two that I just really am happy that I brought into my collection and I'm actually surprised about how much I actually genuinely love them are these two so the first one is the Natasha Denona My Dream Tree my dream cheek trio now caveat with this is that it's not going to work for all skin tones which sucks i wish she brought out more of these to cater to more skin tones but for my skin tone i love it i really do i often quite like travel with this now i took it to melbourne with me it's just perfect so i love this cream highlighter formula here it's really nice. It's really, really seamless and like melting onto the skin. Very natural looking. I really enjoy it. I like the powder highlight as well when I want to add like a bit more bling to the skin. It's not glittery or anything like that, but just it adds that like extra like vavoom. And I quite like this formula of blush. I thought this formula was going to be like the blush in the Glam Face Palette, which... I don't super love that formula, but this is more just like a straight up... It, it kind of feels almost... It feels like the item beauty blushes. If you've tried the item beauty blush, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where it's it's creamy, but it's not a cream. It's a powder, but it's not a powder. I really like it, and I think it's a nice shade. And then the next one is this Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. What's it called? Beautifying Face Palette. I have the shade uh, Fair Medium, is what it's got on the back. So this one right here, I'm sure you've seen it everywhere. I love it. I love it. I wasn't expecting to love it. I really wasn't. I picked it up because of FOMO and the packaging is gorgeous and I'm so glad. One, I love this blush shade right here. This one's pretty too, but I love this. This is a blush shade that is just one of those colors that no matter what makeup you're wearing is going to look good. It's so buildable. If you like a pigmented blush, you'll hate it, but I love it because it's so buildable. And these highlighters are surprisingly, and I don't know why I say surprisingly, but I just expected them to be really texturizing and I just didn't think they would be my vibe. They're so smoothing. They're so natural. They're so beautiful on the skin. I honestly reach for this palette quite often. I really do. And it surprises me because I just, 
I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting from this formula, but I wasn't expecting to love it. And I really, really, really like it. Setting spray last year was the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. And it's the same setting spray this year. I haven't actually even tried any others. It's this, and then I have the Benefit Professional, and that's all I use. So still my, still my fave. Haven't brought anything new in. Brows, same as last year. Benefit Gimme Brow. Benefit Precisely My Brow. Just good cult classics that you can't go wrong with. Also, a brow pencil that is probably, it might be a thing, it might not be a thing, is the Mario brow pencil because it's got this kind of a shape to it. So it's not like that super fine, like, hair stroke type, but um, it's actually the brow pencil I used today. I just really like this. I find the pigment comes off really nicely. It's not too much, but it's not too little. It doesn't, like... Um, drag on your brows. It just draws really easily. I find the shapes really nice to just when I want to do my brows really quickly and just fill them in. I actually, I really like this and I like the little clicky thing and it has a spoolie on the end. I don't know. I didn't, ex again, it's one of those products. Brow products are essential but they're one of those things that don't excite me. But this one does oddly excite me. It's weird. And then brow gel randomly. This is probably the only, if not, it definitely is the only drugstore product that I am mentioning in this whole video. It's probably one of the only drugstore products I tried this year, honestly. And I didn't even buy it myself. I actually got this for free from Ulta Beauty when I bought, like, you know how at Ulta, when you buy stuff, they just throw in a heap of things for free? Um, well, that's what happened to me anyway. So I got this for free from Ulta from my purchase and have fallen in love with it. It's the NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. Uh, I really like this. Again, brow gel I'm wearing today. My fringe is probably pushing my brows down and hiding them, but still, I just really like this. I, it holds my brows up really well. It kind of fluffs them up in a really nice way. And yeah, I even like this more, I think, than the Patrick Ta Lamination Gel. I just, I don't know. It's great. I, I don't know why, but it is. I'm not saying that because it's drugstore and I'm like, why is something drugstore good? Just more so like it seems so simple. Like it's just a, it, it's even just a normal like mascara type wand. But I just, I like using it. So there you go. Eye primer, you know, you know. Rare Beauty, hands down. This one's nearly finished. I've already got a backup. It is my favorite primer I have ever tried, period, hands down. It's so good. It's the perfect combination. I, I Last year it was the NARS Smudge Proof Eye Primer. And that one I just found this year was getting too dry for my eyelids. Whereas the Rare Beauty one does pretty much the same thing as the NARS one, but it's not as drying. It's just a little bit more hydrating, and that's what I love about it. Shout out to the Pat McGrath Labs Intensify Stick. This is an absolute glorious addition to your makeup collection. I probably talked about it last year as well. It's just like a glitter glue type thing, but it's easier because it's in a wand. It's not messy or anything like that, and it is invaluable. Invaluable to me. It does make the intensity of your metallics like better but the biggest thing for me is that it is that kind of glitter glue type thing it minimizes any potential fallout that you might have and for my hooded eyes it just increases the longevity of the shadow so I already have a backup of this in my collection as well. I was without it for a couple of weeks and honestly, it was the most dramatic period of my life. Mascara, I've tried a couple of good mascaras this year. The Lancome Lashy Doll, flawless, flawless. I've just used my last one up. Love that, highly rate it. Um, the Say mascara I'm using currently as a mini is really, really good as well. Um, the Tower 28 though, so good. This is so good. I really like this one. Um, I think I like this more than I like the Lancome Lashy Doll because this is a bit of a nicer, cleaner formula for your eyes. Does the same kind of thing for me at least as what the Lancome Lashy Doll does. And it's just a bit easier to get off at the end of the day and all that kind of stuff. So, and cheaper as well. So I really like this Tower 28 mascara. Also a shout out to the Rare Beauty mascara. This is in its box because I have two mascaras on the go right now, so I'm not opening it. But I have gone through a full size of this year, this year and a mini size. And whenever I don't kind of have it in the rotation, I actually miss it. So I think that means it's a favorite. And it's not anything crazy wowing. It really isn't, which I know is selling it. Like, it's like, why is it a favorite? It's just a really good everyday mascara. It just really is. It's like, it's not going to make your lashes too bubble or anything, but it doesn't irritate my eyes. I have sensitive eyes, so it's great for that. It's great for a work day where I just want my lashes to have mascara on them. And it does do a nice job. Like, it's not, it doesn't make them look horrendous or anything. But it's just a good, solid mascara that, at the end of the day, just washes off perfectly and seamlessly in hot water, which is a must for me. So this is like my everyday mascara. This is like my I want a little bit more, little bit more Vavoom mascara eyeliner. 
Victoria Beckham Coco. I really want the black shade in this. I just need to go through some of my liners. So non-irritating. I talked about this in my full face of Victoria Beckham Beauty. The best thing about this for me is that it is so non-irritating on my eyes and it's very emollient so you can really smudge it out along your top lash line and then it will set in place. I love the Victoria Beckham liners. The Melt Cosmetics Olive Liner. You guys have seen this in like so many videos. This is hands down my favorite eyeliner. I love the shade of this. It just adds something to kind of any look when you want to just add a little bit of pop of color, but you still want it to be quite neutral. This liner is my all time favorite. I love it. You see me, you guys see me use it all the time. And then just a little shout out to the Kaleidos duochrome liners or multi-chrome liners. I have every shade. This was actually PR. I really like these. Again, the multi-chrome just adds like a little extra something, something to a look, but it's not such a bold in your face out there multi-chrome shades that, you know, if you weren't into wearing color or anything, you'd be really intimidated by. They're still quite wearable multi-chrome shades, and I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. And these are also very non-irritating on my sensitive little eyes. So yeah, these get a huge shout out. I really like them. We need to talk about cream eyeshadows because I really started deep diving into cream eyeshadows in the second half of this year, and boy, have I discovered some good ones. My favorite ones that I discovered hands down is the Lisa Eldridge cream shadows, the Liquid Lorexes. I have Daphne, Ane, and Zora. I do have a review of these on my channel. I love these. I love these. They do not crease on my hooded eyes whatsoever. They wear all day. The doe foot applicator of these make it so easy to apply the cream shadow. The shades are stunning, non-irritating, doesn't sting my eyes or anything, long wearing. My favorite, my favorite. They're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Close second, if not tied for first, the Hourglass Scattered Lights. This is in the shade Smoke. My lord, am I impressed by this. My lord. This is gorgeous. Smoke especially. I actually really want to pick up more shades of this because I don't know if you can see it here. This is just a really lovely everyday shade. I am going to do a cream shadow roundup video. I just want to make sure I really have my thoughts first, but I definitely know I love this smoke shade. I wear it so often as a one and done or just even like a bronzer through the crease and this tapped over the lids or even this tapped over like shadows. It just adds that little dimension and that sparkle and it's so beautiful. I think these are highly rated and they don't crease on my hooded eyes. The Ellis Fast cream shadows that nobody talks about. Nobody talks about this brand, why it is so good. This one is in the shade E through E302 and if you want VR Fire Opal in a liquid shadow like VR Fire Opal from Pat McGrath Labs Bronze Seduction, get yourself this. Look at that. Isn't that uh, amazing? I mean, if it would focus, that'd be great. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It is such a beautiful shade. Again, easily blended. The doe foot makes it easy to apply. Doesn't crease on my eyes. Really long wearing. And then I also have this shade E106, which is a really nice one and done taupe shade just for like when I want a cream shadow to just throw on. Um, or sometimes I put this shade on first and then the green one over the top. So that's this one right here. Super wearable, again, doesn't crease on my hooded eyes or anything like that. It's just truly, like, this is such a good formula. It doesn't irritate my eyes. Long wearing. They have a great shade range of colors. Perfection. More people need to talk about it. It's perfection. We just have lips left and then we were done, which is great because I really am losing my voice. Okay, lip liners. Last year I tried the Charlotte Tilbury lip liners. Still really rate them, but this year... I think they got pipped, actually. Hands down, my favorite has to be the Natasha Denona. I need a nude lip crayon in the shade. Um, Natasha, this is from her My Dream collection that she released. It is perfect. I use it. I haven't stopped using this lip liner or the lipstick or the gloss since I picked it up. I don't know what else to tell you. If, if you haven't tried it yet, I don't know what else to tell you. Apart from maybe it's not your shade, but it's perfect. Um, second, the Lisa Eldridge lip liners. I tried these for the first time. Or actually, I think I tried Fawn last year, probably. These are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> Can't stress enough. Her quality of all her makeup products is so stunning, honestly. I have three shades now. I have, uh, Fawn, which is the top one here. The middle one is Petal, and the last one is Sorcery. Such a creamy, long-wearing, pigmented lip liner. Delightful. Highly recommend. Worth every single cent. They will not budge throughout the day as well, I can assure you. 
And lastly, the Pat McGrath Labs lip liner in the shade Contour. A really, really good nude lip liner. So that's this one right here. It just goes with like every single lip color really. And again, it doesn't budge. You put it on and it doesn't budge. It is stunning. Such a good quality formula. I actually just picked up two new shades of her formula in lip liners as well because it is really that good. Lipsticks, I recently just did a like my favorite top 10 lipsticks in my collection. So I'm gonna try and remember to link that video down below for you guys. I recommend checking that video out because that is like my top 10 favorite lipsticks of all time. And this is kind of just a repeat. Obviously my favorite lipstick and this is so grotty, but uh, it's the Natasha Denona, like my dream lipstick in the shade Natasha that she just released in her My Dream collection. I adore this. It is my favorite shade. This one is all gumpy because it got melted accidentally in my handbag. I need to pick up a new one and I will because it is truly the best lipstick shade of all time. I love it. Next up we have the By Mario lip cream in the shade Muted Mauve. It's actually what's on my lips right now. I really like this lip cream. I think that it is a really, really good product. It's not a, um, I actually probably need a little bit of a top up. So let's do that. It's not a matte liquid lip, so it's not gonna be incredibly long wearing. You will need to reapply it throughout the day, but because it is that lip cream, it is a little bit longer than say like a satin lipstick, but I just find it's like really easy to apply. The shade is such a lovely shade, especially for my skin tone. Um, it's pigmented, it's non like irritating on the lips. I have quite sensitive lips as well. And I just, I didn't expect to like this. I don't normally like lip products that come in this kind of a formula, like in terms of like liquid lips ish, but this one really surprised me by how much I love it. Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. I'm not going to cover off on it in too in depth. Just any Lisa Eldridge lipstick, period. A mess. I probably talked about Rose and Zen's last year. I've picked up Beige Kalahari this year. Again, check out my top 10 lipsticks video. It really explains it all. These are incredible, incredible. Such a good formula, such incredible shades. I love them. Lastly, we're gonna talk about lip glosses. I have quite a few. Um, so, and a few of them I have talked about quite regularly. The number one product that I have been loving this year is the By Mario Moisture Glow Lip Serums. This is my fourth one. I had Pink Glow, Mauve Glow, I've got Blushing Glow in my handbag downstairs, and this one is Apricot Glow. If you don't like that cooling minty feeling, don't pick this up because it does have that like tingling minty feeling, but I quite enjoy it. I just also find that this product is really, really hydrating on the lips and it's like juiced up. It has the perfect amount of shade to it. So if you don't want to wear a lipstick, you can honestly just throw these on and they look really good and add something, you know, it looks like you're wearing a lip gloss or a lipstick. Love them, highly rate them. The Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. Again, I have the shade Primrose. Another product, it's, honestly, this product is pretty much exactly like the Mario ones. I can't tell a difference. So depending on what you find easier to get or which shade you prefer, I recommend either of them. I really can't tell a difference with this one. I love them both. Same reasons why I love the Mario one is the reason why I love this Tarte one. It's it's a really good product. Tower 28 lip glosses. I talk about them all the time. I've only added more and more shades of these to my collection. Keep raving about them. Love them. Get on them. The Natasha Denona My Dream Lip Gloss in the shade Natasha. Again, very, very pretty. Highly recommend this, especially if you have the lip liner and the lipstick. It's a really, really beautiful nude lip gloss. Absolutely stunning. The Lawless Forget the Filler. I have this one. I also have the shade Velvet. Rosy. This one is rosy. This one's my favorite. It's a plumping lip gloss, but it doesn't have any tingling feelings or anything like that, but it really does juice up the lips. This is a bit of a thicker formula, so if you like that more thicker, slightly sticky, it's not overly sticky that it's annoying, but just a little bit more sticky than, say, the Tower 28, then it might not be for you, but if you like that formula, it is for you. I really like these. I think they're absolutely stunning. And then lastly, the Vive Lip Do Glossy Lip Oil. Very hydrating, very nourishing on the lips. A really good product when you just want a bit of a tint, but you want more of a balm. This is for you. I love these and she has some really good shades. I really, really like this. In terms of eyeshadow palettes, I just recently did a palette ranking, ranking every single palette that I tried this year. So I recommend checking that out to see what my faves were. Honestly, I, I loved most, pretty much all, apart from maybe three or four of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried this year, but my absolute top 
two favourites or top three favourites was the Pat McGrath Labs Moonlit Seduction, the Isamea Industrial Palette and the Lisa Aldridge Vega Palette. Um, again, I'll link that video down below for you. I recommend checking that out if you want to see my specific eyeshadow thoughts and feelings for the year. We have covered the entire full face of my favorite makeup products. Let me know some of your favorites down below. And did you kind of pick most of my favorites for the year? Were you like, yeah, I'm thinking these are going to be her favorites or were most of them a complete surprise to you? Let me know your thoughts down below. And uh, yeah, let me know some of your favorites because I'm very interested to hear what you were loving the most in the year of 2022. So I hope you enjoyed the video in some way, shape or form. If you're here till this point, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate you. If you haven't already, pretty please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps my channel out so much and I really appreciate it. And other than that, I hope that you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you next time. Bye.